Hello to everybody and thank you to the organizing committee of AFRILEX for accepting this joint paper. In this paper, we will deal with the lexicographical treatment of the English IC ICL adjectives and come up with some critical comments and suggestions. The paper has been prepared uh, together with Ma Lindong from the Center for Lexicographical Studies at the Guangdong University of Foreign Studies in China. And it's based upon a joint article which we published uh, last year in Hermes. Now, one of the challenges that, and there are a lot of challenges that uh, non-native learners and speakers of English are facing when they write in this language is the use of adjectives ending in IC and ICL. It's quite a lot of adjectives ending in those. Sometimes users are not sure which one they should use in a specific context. And other times they're not aware that they have a problem that happens not. And it's not only a question for learners at beginners and intermediate level, but also for advanced learners and even those that we will see practicing academic writing. Uh, when they consult, if they have a problem, for example, some of the web-based language from, they'll get recommendation for specific uh, uh, adjective pairs, but, but they'll also be informed that there's no general rule. So that means that if they cannot get an answer, they refer to dictionaries. So how do they perform and how can we actually improve them? Here, there are some of these adjectives. You can have an idea and you will see that some of them are strange. Some of them are with different meaning. And so there's quite a lot of different adjective pairs of this kind. The suffixes, I see and I can, they're very, productive in the English language. So they have been widely treated in the uh, literature. For example, in this handbook from Oxford, uh, there was a Google search uh, reported that yielded almost 12,000 unique stems that took either one or the other or both of them. And it's quite a big number uh, that is relevant. Uh, here we have the Longman uh, communication 3000, and we'll see that among the 3000 most frequent uh, words, there are 29 adjectives uh, ending in these suffixes, and there are also some nouns. We're not going to treat the nouns here, but they're actually interesting because there's inference uh, between uh, nouns and uh, adjectives. It's quite a lot. And uh, th that means that uh, it will be more or less 1% of all uh, the most frequent English words uh, that are uh, having this problem, and if you go to the adjectives, uh, just focus on them, it will be maybe five or ten percent of the adjectives. So this justifies the special attention we will give to this uh, cl class of words. Uh, there always any pair is a potential source of doubt and mistake for non-native speakers. They can have different meanings or frequencies, or in some cases, there is a preferred one uh, in a specific collocation and term. It, there are some of them that are almost non-existent, but the problem is that learners, non-native speakers, they'll not know. That is the problem. And that means that we have to give them some kind of guidance, and we also have to approach the whole idea from a new angel, as Galilei said, and that's the reason why we had him on the front page. Now we'll see two words, academic and academic. We'll see academic was the most frequent 200 years ago. Now it's academic and academic doesn't really exist. But here we see a, a Russian course in academic co-writing from eight years ago. And here we see a, an article published in the European Journal by Mexican authors three years ago, and they also use academic. So it's actually a problem. Uh, there are a lot of uh, classification within lexicology, uh, but when we come to lexicography, uh, the classification will depend on the relevance. That means if they have to be treated differently, then we can see there are different classes. In this sense, uh, we can have work with the two variables, meaning and frequency, and also uh, some other things. It gives three main groups of 
were, uh, adjective pairs, two with different meanings, they have different, the same meaning at different frequency, and then they have more or less the same meaning and roughly the same frequency. We'll look at this. Here we see the 20 most frequent adjective pairs. It's, we have extracted this from the British National Corpus and listed it by the EC uh, uh, adjective. And uh, we'll uh, make an analysis of these uh, four ones in five uh, uh, prestigious English dictionaries, I include all of them. And after that, we'll briefly look at electric and electrical, which is different. Uh, and and uh, this is what we're going to do. Here we see a note coming up in Mario Webster. Webster. It's the only note they have. They have, don't have for the other language pairs. And we can see it's a quite uh, descriptive uh, uh, note. Here we see also a, a small one from Collins. It only have it historic, not even in historical, but it's, uh, it's also a little descriptive. Here we have another a very short one from Longman. They only have it under economic, not economical, but they at least tell the user to not confuse that word with economical. Here's Macmillan. It's a long one that gave us a lot of correct uh, combination, but also incorrect one. And finally, we have the Oxford Learner Station Net, which is actually treating all of the four pairs except for graphic and graphical. Here you see the one with classical and classic, where they both have or explain the different meanings, but also the collocational preferences. Now, Oxford is by far the most systematic one, but even that one does, has a lot of less frequent uh, adjective pairs and also some will sub and minor and subtle uh, semantic difference, but they have not treated. And that means that users have nowhere to go. Uh, and at the same time, we'll see that the notes, usage notes we've seen, some of them are very descriptive, others are instructive and so on. Uh, and that's mixture, it has to do with the, the fact that all those dictionaries are multifunctional. Uh, for, for writing, we only need instructions actually. Here we see how they treat uh, low frequency uh, icon forms. We have academic, atomic, and basic, uh, and so on. Uh, it's a good uh, example of bad communication that just take the user directly to the short form, but without informing why they're taking it there. They're also a good communication archaic from uh, uh, Webster, where they showed it's archaic, and then what is the recommended one specific. Then we have a problematic one. Uh, this is from colleagues that, that have both together, but to just say that specifically is another word for specific. Nothing to help the user not to use it because it's actually very strange today. Then we have same meaning and similar frequency or something. Then there are no reasons to recommend one or the other unless they have some collocational preferences. Uh, Here's a note once more from Oxford, electrical, electrical. You can see that they'll explain the small subtle differences in meaning, but also uh, show the collocational preferences. In any case, all the dictionaries, they have some convincing solution, but also some problematic one. And especially we can say that all of them inconsistent. That means that learners have to look for assistance elsewhere. And uh, what we recommend is we work with these standardized usage nodes. It will not require a lot of work and uh, they will also be relevant for writing assistance based on lexicographical data. Here we see the performance of four very different writing assistants. I'm not going into detail with that, but you see that none of them really gets uh, through and uh, treat all the problems. Right assistant has something because of its special construction, but it's not always the right good choice. Here we have Grammarly, I've taken uh, 12 sentences, used the less likely form, a different one, and we see that there are 
only five objections for Grammarly. This is from last year. This year I did it the same thing and some of them have changed now scientifically also uh, on the line, but then economically is no more. I don't know why. In any case, what is good here, and if you see economical, then you have this usage nodes where the type word is here, the recommended words is there. And then you have the, the node where the type word is inserted. This is a standardized node which we can learn uh, from which we can learn. Now, writing assistant has a lot, have a lot of uh, advantages to it. And uh, in this case, in this uh, paper, I'll focus on write assistant. Uh, but the proposal will come up with it will also be able to be used or could be used in other writing assistant and even in online dictionaries. This is the functionality, the typical one of write assistant. You type a word, you get a suggestion. If you want to consult, you can consult. And then what we hope to have in the nearby future, alerts. If there's any problem with the word, you get an alert. And if you have doubts, you can just consult. Let's see how we can work with it. Adjective with different meanings. Uh, the solution would be here to make a small comparative usage note, briefly explain the meaning of the two words and give some additional instructions. In the databases, it should be attached to both forms, not to just one of those which we saw in the dictionaries, of all, all the adjective pairs uh, with this characteristic with different meanings. It's not a lot, but all of them. And uh, they should be presented in the consultation uh, window as default to avoid scrolling down and so on. Then it can later be uh, expanded. For each adjective pair, the segment X or Y is prepared. And this will automatically pop up in the alert window when the uh, user or writer writes one of these uh, two uh, words. And the alert have two functions. It works function as a reminder, if they already knew, just forget it. And the co could call the user's attention to an unknown problem. And in this case, they can go directly to the comparative node in the consultation window. Let's see how it works. Proposal one. Here's the text writing, blah, 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 blah. And then economical. The consultation will come up and also an alert venue, economic or economical. And if you don't understand it, you can go to the usage node and have more explanation. You understand it's just a reminder. And if you don't want it, you can just delete that functionality. Same meaning and roughly similar frequencies. Uh, there's no reason to treat the only if they have different collocational preferences. Once more, a small usage node is elaborated with possible small semantic uh, differences uh, and the uses with specific uh, nouns and also a list of the most frequent and well-established collocation and terms. And it's put into the database on the both words and so on, and they can be accessed both from the alert window or from the consultation window. Now, we see this proposal. We see once more Jim Hendricks at the Woodstock, electrical, it's electric guitar, but I write electrical, the alert comes up, and then I can go to, because there's not more, much difference between electric and electrical, but they're quite different in some preferences uh, in terms of collocations and so on. It's called electric guitar, not electrical guitar, for example. Same meaning and very diff different frequency. Then we propose three notes. X is not used, use Y instead. X is rarely used, you use Y instead, or is obsolete. You can make four, you can reduce it to two, that is not the question. But what we do here is that we give a recommendation and we explain why. And then they're put into all the non-recommended forms in the data, but not the recommended one. And they're also shown in relation to those. Let's see. He spent almost two months for the right designer because he wanted a specific, specific and obsolete, use specific instead. And you can just use it. Or if you want to know something specific, you can consult the dictionary like this. These are the proposals. The treatment shown here has three advantages. The writers are explicitly recommended to use a specific form. They're informed why they have to use it. 
And the standard out notes are also quite easy to handle for lexicographers. What are the challenges? This is a long time challenge. And until now, dictionary have been the only crutches offered to those who don't have problem, but they have not been perfect as we have seen. So the proposal we have come up with have several advantages that you can read here. Uh, it's a proposal I think is going for the future. And the vision is that we really use these new technologies through interdisciplinary collaboration with experts from other fields. The idea is to get completely new products. And that means that each discipline, also lexicography, was have to study what could we do differently. And in this case, we could actually, in our databases, prepare these alerts with uh, explanation and so on. This is something which have not been done, uh, at least not sufficiently until now. And this is, of course, the problem we have treated is a small problem, maybe. But we think there are a lot of other problems that can be approached from a new angel with a new technology. So hopefully this paper will inspire other people to approach other old questions from a new angel. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the whole team from Guangdong University of Foreign Languages.